Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an automated walk cycle in Duik Angela. I will guide you through every process and detail so you can make the best of a walk cycle for your character. So let's start. All right, so here we are inside of Adobe After Effects and now let's begin. Well, here, as I've promised, we have this composition and in this video, we are going to create a walk cycle for this woman in here. So we basically, in this video, we will review the walking settings for the Duik and we will learn how we can create an automated walk cycle for our character. So here I have a composition, woman character, and I already make the rig. Now it's time to uh, create the auto rig. But before we do that, as you see, I have split up all of the layers in here and I have pre-composed the woman character in here. Now, one important tip before we start is that when you want to create an automated walk cycle for a character, it is important to pre-compose your character first. And I tell you why in later of this video. But for now, don't forget, when you want to create an automated walk cycle with Duik, first pre-compose your character, which I already did. Now, on the woman character, as you see, I have used the OCO rig and I created a rig for my character. I have already placed the anchor points in the right place and I even parented to the selected bones. Now, what I, what I need to do, the only thing that I need to do is that I'm going to go towards the bone section. I'm going to select all of the bones and I'm going to click on auto rig to create a rig for my character. So, do you is going to write some expression to make that auto rig. All right, and now here's the rig that I have in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to check my rig to see if uh, if there is any mistake or issue with my rig so I can fix it. So I'm going to select the leg and I, as I move it, as you see, it bends in the wrong direction. So I'm going to press Ctrl plus Z one, one time to reverse my last action and I'm going to set the side to 100. Now, if I start to move it, as you see, it moves correctly. And now let's check the other leg. As you see, it looks good. Now let's check for the hand. It, it looks good. Same as this one. Well, there is no issue with the uh, rig. So now let's go towards the automated walk cycle. Well, before we start, we need to do a few things. So I'm going to go towards the automation and expression section. And now, as you see here, we have a walk and run cycle. So if I click on this gear on here, it's going to show me a settings. Well, this is really important. Now we need to parent these controllers, which they are represented by this uh, green uh, color to the uh, structure that is on here. Duik already made a guess and parented few things in here, but to make sure that we are not going to encounter any problems later on, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to check one by one. So I'm going to select the head, which is in here, and I'm going to click on it to open up the controller. As you see right now, it is set on control simple human head, which is correct. If I select the controller head, as you see, this is for my head. So that means it's correct. Now, the second one is the human neck and shoulder, which is correct. Now, the next one is torso, which is correct. We don't have a spine, so that's also correct. So do it automatically set it on none. Now, on the hips, we have the hips. It's correct. The body, of course, is correct. Now let's go towards the right hand. So let's extend it a bit so we can see it better. Now, if I click on the right hand, as you see, it is set now on the simple human arm, uh, meaning that it's uh, front right or front arm the right. Well, if I look at it, as you see, it is not correct. So we need to fix that. So I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna change it to left one and same, I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to change it towards the right one, like this. Now, same as the foot, I'm going to select it. And so this is going to be the, as you see, the right foot is set on leg back. 
So, all right, so I'm gonna select it like back to, to make sure that it's correct. So, and I'm gonna select the right foot to see if it's front foot. As you see, it is correct. And the last one is the back left one. And as you see, it is correct. Now, all you need to do to create an autom automated walk cycle is that you need to select all of these layers and then you need to click on walk run cycle. Now, Duik created something, as you see, it, Duik created a walk cycle for a character, but right now it doesn't really look good. But trust me, creating a walk cycle without making a keyframe, it's a huge deal. So now we need to fix some settings to make our walk cycle more appealing. So now here's the controller for the walk cycle. Now, as you see, when I click it on it, on my effects and control tab, we have some certain settings that we can tweak. So this is the first one is for the icon and anchor point, which you can make it the icon bigger or move its position. So we're not gonna dive into that. So the main, thing in here is the walk cycle and the run cycle. So on the first tab, we have the general motion. So if I start to increase the general motion, as you see, my character is kind of get more, you know, more energetic. It moves really faster. As I, if I decrease it to 50, for example, the character starts to walk slower. Now, if I set it on zero, as you see, the character doesn't move at all. So I'm gonna set it on 100. Now, the same thing with the walk cycle. You can tweak the between zero to 100 to change the walk cycle speed. Now, if I set it on zero this time and I change the run cycle to 100, now, as you see, my character starts to run with a really weird pose that you can fix it. But for now, let's stick to the walk. Now, on the next section, we have the character panel. Well, on here, we have height. It sort of kind of works as a speed. So if I turn the height to 200, I see the character starts to, to walk really slow. And as I, well, for example, decrease it to 50 again, the character steps is going to be faster. Now, the energy, as it sounds, it's the energy of the character, but it really depends on the wall um, for the bottom part of your character. What I mean by that is that if I increase the energy, for example, to 50, as you see, the legs is gonna, you know, become mm, a bit different. As you see, the energy when went into 100 and for example, 30, <laughs> the character moves like this. But the softness, however, it really depends on upper part of your body. For example, now if I go on the zero frame and I start to change it, as you see, it mostly impact the upper part of the body. So I'm not gonna tweak these settings and then I'm gonna go towards the walk cycle section. Now, as you see, the walk speed is now set on minus 100. What it means is that if your walk cycle is kind of reversed, you can tweak this parameter to 100 to get that fix. Right now, as you see, uh, when I change the walk cycle walk speed to 100, my character stopped, started to walk the backwards. So, and I'm gonna change that back to minus 100 and the type we have two types in here, the realistic walk cycle, a dancing walk cycle, which is a bit, you know, cartoonish style, but I'm gonna, uh, uh, you know, stick with the walk cycle in here. And on the run cycle, again, you can change the duration if the duration was, if the duration of your character was wrong, you can change it in here. Now going to the next parameter with everything which kind of everything that starts for our character is that as you see we have some rotation controller which you can control the angle of your rotation of your selected bones for example if i start to uh, increase the head swing all the way up as you see the the rotation of the head is become extremer and as you as you probably now guessing it rotates base of the anchor point. So it's really important to set your anchor point at the right place when you are rigging the character. So I'm gonna reverse it back to all the way down to zero. Now the next swing is also something like that. So I'm gonna set it on 
zero, the softness, of course, it's kind of related to make it, make it a bit smoother. I highly suggest you to work with this parameter alone to see how it works on your character. Now, the next one is the body. Exactly the same as the neck. So let me close the neck and head panel. If I start to uh, increase the torso swing, as you see, my character is going to bend forward and backward and a bit uh, extremer. So I'm going to set it on zero, same as the spine and same as the hips. I don't, I don't want any movement forward or backward to my body. However, this body translation works as a something that it's the measurement for your up and down movement. So if I press it, uh, set it on 0 0.5, as you see, it's going to be move a bit slower compared if I to set it on, for example, to 10. So I'm going to set it on one for this particular. And lastly, we have arms. Now I'm going to um, decrease the swings to something like this. So to set the, so we can see the action. How does it going to affect our character? A bit lower. So on this one, and this decrease it because I don't want much much of the rotation on the character because I, uh, the body of my character is designed is not designed very right so the path of the you know uh, these are lines are kind of overlapping and making the character ugly and now for the last section we have legs in here so if I tore and if I open up the leg section, as you see, the first one we have the feet height. So if I change it, as you see, it's gonna kind of, you know, adjust the up and down of the leg movement. And the feet rotation is kind of uh, adjust your rotation of your feet. So I'm gonna set it on 30 for this one. Now as you see, the legs are rotating a bit better. And now since my character poses are a bit exaggerated, what I need to do is that if I go towards the advanced parameters and I start to uh, increase the step amplitude to 200, now as you see, the character uh, walk cycle, the legs are bypassing each other, which is, this is what I want for my character. So. Now it is going, now it, it starts to look more like a real walk cycle, right? Now the frequency is that if I increase it, for example, all the way to 300, as you see, it, it just affects the, how the legs are moving. And one more parameter is that time offset. And it becomes really handy when you are working, for example, on four frames and 12 and you want to make a cycle loop for your animation, this is where you can change the time offset to make a perfect loop. Right now, as you already know, I work on 24 frames per second, so each step takes around 12 frames. Now, on the last one, there are animation data, which they can help you to, you know, some data that can uh, help you to memorize or, you know, make your design better, but I'm not gonna touch touch anything of that. And now the reason, the main reason what I've said that you need to pre-compose the character, as you saw, I have went through every detail of the uh, automated walk cycle parameters, but there was nothing like you could move your character from, for example, pose A to pose B. This is why you need to pre-compose your character so you can move your character when you want to walk. So now all I need to do is that I need to press the P to bring up position and set a keyframe on zero. And then I'm gonna go towards, for example, three second, and I'm gonna create another one. Moving back forward by pressing J to go towards the first keyframe, what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna move the character towards here. And then I'm gonna hit play. As you see, now my character, I accidentally selected and moved both of the uh, both of the keyframes. So now, as you see, my character starts walking towards here, but it doesn't just stop there. 
So all I need to do is that I need to go towards the zero frame and then I'm gonna uh, exactly go, for example, on two frames and 12. And then I'm gonna set a keyframe on walk and exactly 12 frames forward, which is under three seconds, I'm gonna set it on zero. Now let's watch. So if I play the animation now, as you see, my character comes and it starts in here. So even, I, and it stops in here, I'm sorry. So I can even make it better if I go a few frames backward, for example, like uh, two, for two seconds and 20 frame, and then I set it on 75. So, so the character doesn't just stop there. So as you see, we have made an automated walk cycle uh, for our character. Now, uh, still, it needs a bit rework when it comes to, you know, animating a walk cycle with Duik. It is not 100% accurate. You always need to adjust few minor things, which you can do, for example, by adjusting the uh, layers for example now I need to fix the shoes all I all I can do is that I can press I can move the shoes in its right position so we have that uh, perfect walk cycle for a character or you know even you can now add an um, add an add a keyframe for it so you can do a lot of things now since the, they are parented to the bones and the bones are separated from your layers. So you have a lot of control over your character. So that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave out a like and subscribe to my channel as it will help me out a lot to grow my channel. I see you in the next video. Have fun.